So what we're doing is looking at number 22, which is f of x equals x to the fourth minus 18x squared plus 32. And this is asking for, uh, asking us to find the zeros of this function. So we set f of x equal to zero and rewrite like this. And now I'm going to use u substitution because of the exponents. Notice that the four is two times two. So, and when you have that kind of relationship between the exponents, um, this is what you do. You let u, that's the traditional letter, let u equal the x squared. And then u squared will equal x squared squared. Which equals x to the fourth. So x to the fourth is going to equal u squared. And. Um, uh, x squared is going to equal u. I can rewrite this as a temporary quadratic function. Okay, now uh, this is factorable. It doesn't have to be. If it's not factorable, you can always use the quadratic function, uh, quadratic equation, quadratic formula. There you go. But as it is, 32 equals 2 times 16. Or negative 2 times negative 16. And negative 2 plus negative 16 equals negative 18, which is the B number right here. And since there's a one in front of the quadratic term, that is one is the leading coefficient, we can do the easier form of grouping, which is make two empty parentheses, write a u and a u, and then minus 2 and minus 16. Then we set each factor equal to 0, u minus 2 equals 0, and u minus 16 equals 0. And we solve both of these factors for two. So plus two, I mean for two, for u. Plus two, plus two. Negative two plus two is zero. So we're left with a u over on the left. And then zero plus two is two. So u equals two. And over here, plus 16 to both sides. So that I can zero out the 16 over here. Negative 16 plus 16 is zero. I'm left with U on the left-hand side and 16 on the right-hand side. And so I have solved for U but of course the original function is in X, so I have to re-substitute. Which means we're still gonna be going on for a while. Uh, since U equals X squared, I'm going to have X squared equals two. And I take the square root of both sides so I can just find what X equals. And to do that, I take the square root of both sides and I put a plus or minus in front of the square root of the number because 
every positive uh, uh, number, every positive number in the real number system has two possible square roots, a positive and a negative square root. That's the reason. So X equals plus or minus the square root of two. And then going over here, I do the same thing. U equals X squared. So X squared equals 16. Let me move that over. I take the square root of each side because quite honestly, nobody cares what X squared equals. We need to find what X equals. So, in this way, if I take the square root of X squared, I get X, and X is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 16, which is four. So I have just found the zeros of f of x. There are four of them. Um, the zeros are negative the square root of two, positive the square root of two, negative four, and positive four. And that's how you do this problem. Gotcha. So is that understandable? Yes, I think it, where I messed up was the factoring part. I used the wrong symbols. OK, OK, yeah. good. Good to know that. OK, Um. do you want to try number 23? Sure, let's do it. Number 23. We have the same kind of thing. Find the zeros of the function and their multiplicities. We can do this. Well, not quite yet, though. Number 23. F of X equals X to the third minus 6x squared minus x plus 6. And we're going to find the zeros and the multiplicities of each of them. Multiplicities, yeah. That's a strange word. Okay. Multiplicities. Okay, so that's what we're going to be finding. Ah, uh, we're finding the zeros. So we set f of x equal to zero. And then this is four terms. It's a cubic function with four terms. And we're going to see if it's factorable by grouping. So I'm going to, I mean, I know it is. In advance, I know it is. Sometimes you can just look at them and see this. Most of the time, 
You can't, but some of the time you can. Okay. Now, the first set of parentheses is always the easiest. You're going to have an X squared in each term that can be factored out to the front. Here's one of those problems with the leading term having a negative coefficient, which means the GCF has to be negative. So we have to work on this. Negative X plus six. We're going to have to pull out a negative one from both terms. So I have to rewrite six. Negative one, x plus, now I can get this plus if I multiply negative 6 times negative 1. That will be plus 6. So now I have my negative 1 I can pull out of each of these terms. So I'll have negative 1 times, so let's mark through the negative one. That always makes life a little bit easier. Then we can see what's left over. I have an X left in this term, and I have plus a negative six left in this term, which is minus six. So now I'll go back over here and write negative one, times x minus 6. Well, doing that changed this, or yeah, well, it changed its form to x minus 6. And now I have an x minus 6 and an x minus 6. x minus 6 is now the GCF. So 0 equals x squared no, x minus 6, that's the GCF. We write that first. Then we write the leftovers. And if you quickly mark through the x minus 6 so you can see clearly what the leftovers are, you've got an x squared and a plus negative 1, which is x squared minus 1. And so you can stop for a minute and have a drink of water. <laughs> and then hopefully stop yourself from thinking you're done. I mean, this is a good half credit, right? It's a half credit problem to this point, but there's more that needs to be done. Um, in particular, you need to recognize that this is the difference of squares, the difference of perfect squares. And so we can factor this. X squared minus one factors into X plus one times X minus one. Now we have zero equals X minus six, X plus one, X minus one. These are factors of this, <clears throat> this problem. So to find out what the zeros are, I need to set each problem equal to zero and solve for X. Okay. If I add six to both sides, let's add a little six. I get X equals zero plus six is six. And over here, subtract one from both sides. So I'll get X equals negative one. 
because one plus negative one is zero and zero minus one is negative one. And then over here, I will add one to both sides, add one to both sides. So negative one plus one is zero. That leaves me with an X on the left and zero plus one is one. Yay! Hey, so, right. so I, I should have not put this there because that's where I was going to put my answers. So doggone it. I will put my answers down. Um, you can write them like six, negative one, and one, or you can write them in order, negative one, one, and six. Sometimes I do that if it's easy, but if it's not, I don't. Uh, and the multiplicities, A negative one occurs once, so the multiplicity is one. One occurs once, so the multiplicity is one. Six occurs once, so the multiplicity is one. So they all have multiplicity one. And that is the story. The hardest part is right here when you have to change this to this. So that's always caused me to slow down and kind of scratch my head. Yeah, slow sure. down, think carefully because it's not obvious. It's kind of counterintuitive to, to figure out what what it is you have to do. You have to be aware that that's a little trick you have to perform. Sometimes. Yeah, I can definitely see how that can be like a mistake right off the bat. Yeah, begging for it. <laughs> so a multiplicity is only one, but if there was the same number, if we had two negative ones, then it would be multiplicity two, right? Correct. Cool. Very okay. good. Very, very good. Okay, uh, let's see. Take a look at number eight and see what, what went wrong there. Number eight, let's see what it went wrong. I haven't looked at it yet. Okay, let me see. Okay, I have my work here on... That is such an ugly problem. That is, so I got, so, okay. I was gonna say, that's not what I got. Okay, so there was error there. Okay, let me, can I show you my work? Uh, yes. I look like a hot mess, but it's okay. I'll see the, I'll let the class see me. Um, let me see if I have to, give you permission since we're in class. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, cool. OK, that and that. And yeah, this is we did this problem. I like a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> ah, but look. Ah. After you took the fraction uh -huh. um, uh, exponent on the left, look at that. You lost your you lost your square root sign. Yes, you lost your square root sign on the left, and you put four back under the radical. Four is the perfect square. M meaning two, right? Yes. Okay. So take a look. 
Take a oh. look at what, what you did. Let me take a look at what I did. Uh, let's see. Oh, goodness. I'm telling everybody I'll be right back and I'm here. <laughs> I think I'm here. Am I here? Yeah. That's weird. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that one. Okay. Okay. Pull up my four. It would have been a two, so it should have been two A B automatically. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is where I messed up, right? Right in this area. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. And then there's another one where you got partial credit. Okay. Let's see. Um, I am just looking all over the place here. <laughs> Let me put this down and this down and ah, there it is. That's eight. Now this is 14. This one, you got you got that one wrong. And we should see what you did and what you were thinking on that. Sure, let me go to number 14. It's only one little part and you got most of the of the uh, um, 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 credit. Oh, that's what I have on my paper. That's weird. Why did I put negative 10? Oh, I think it's because of the number. But here. I got a four here. Yeah, it says you answered four. Oh, what the? Okay. Aww. You answered four, but the answer is really 10. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Do, 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 do. I see why. I think I might have gotten it confused with the video because, as you can see, I have a different problem here. Aha. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Okay. So I got okay, my. Okay, that's great. Up. Okay. So I know what I'm doing, huh? Yes. Look at number 21. Look at number 21, 21. Yes, you got 21. you got part of it right, part of it wrong. OK, so let's look at what happened. This the axis of symmetry. Ah, you didn't say X equals the oh, axis of symmetry it. always has to have X equals. X equals negative half. Uh huh. OK, and you and said negative a half. Now, honestly, if this were the test, I'd go ahead and give you credit for it. OK, thank you, Ms. Barbara. But That's you have to be careful. You have to be careful. Okay. This is the equation of a vertical line. Yes. And for functions, the axis of symmetry is a vertical line. OK, ah, OK, OK. There's so much to remember. I know it is such a pain. I'm so I'm so but happy. Look at how many you got right. I know I'm so proud of myself. You should be. You I, should I, just I, be all bruised. You should be all bruised from patting yourself on the back. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Barbara. I honestly thought I was going to get that question wrong because of the 13 over four. I was like, dang it, because I was doing math frack. I was like, there has to be a different prettier number, but there yeah. wasn't. Absolutely, it looks wrong, doesn't it? 
Yeah, I was like, is this wrong? I don't know. Let's test it out. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Okay. Let's see. I'm trying to find the page 14. K. Because I'm like, no, Myra, bad Myra. And here it is. 16. Okay. The original problem was negative 2x minus 16, right? From yesterday? Oh, that was, oh, that's a different one. Oh, okay. That was from yesterday from the practice problem. Okay, so I didn't actually, okay, where did I mess up? Okay, well, I'm I'm imagining it, the line right now, imagining the line. So since it's on 10, then that means it's going to be, it's going to be 7 plus 3. So that would equal 10. No. What you're going to have here is you're going to take that 10 and you're going to put it in for the x in 2x minus 10. Oh, since it's to the left of negative 7. Yes. Yes, that's right. Okay. Cool beans. I understand that one. Great. Yeah. Okay. Cool beans. Okay. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool lagoons. Okay. Let's go over which one else? Which ones did I miss? Which other ones did I miss? Number 25. 25. Ah, 25. Okay. What did I do wrong there? I don't know. Okay, I have my thought bubble here. Here, I'll show you what I have. Okay. Here, let me bring you up so I'm looking at it. Sure. Okay, good, you did that. And... You switched your letters, that's good. Um, somewhere or other. Yeah, can I do it? Would yeah, that be okay? Yeah, definitely. Because these are tricky also. Ah. They are nasty little tricky buggers. Okay, so we're going to take the seventh root of X minus two. Number 25. F of X equals the seventh root of X minus two. So y equals the seventh root of x minus 2, and x equals the seventh root. I didn't mean and technically. I just meant the next step. Now, nah, I get you. And then it's going to be y minus 2. Yeah. And then. Okay, we are going to raise both sides of the equation to the seventh power. And you did that. At least I think you did. Okay. Now, what happens when you raise, raise this to that? is you get y minus two to the seven divided by seven, which is one, of course. So you're going to have y minus two to the one, which is just y minus two. So you can think of it as this seven canceling out that seven and just giving you y minus two. OK, 
okay? Okay. I so, see where I yeah. think I did wrong. So instead of doing x to the seventh power, I just went ahead and just added x squared over seven. So that was my mistake. Mm -hmm. Inverse of x should be x to the seventh plus two. Let's see if that would be right. Yep, yes it is. Right here. B. F inverse of X equals X to the seventh power plus two. It's a weird answer, but sometimes you just get weird answers. Where the two came from was over here. See, you've got y minus two and you have to solve for y. So you've got to move the two over to the other side and, and you do that by adding two to both sides. So that's how they got the answer. Ah, OK, yes. Makes perfect sense because the plus two is uh, canceling that out, so it's just going to be Y, and then we add that two to the X to the seventh power. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yay, I understand, OK. I'm looking for you to make 100%. Oh, I'll try. I'm going to, I think I'm going to take the test uh, later this afternoon. I'm going to take this time to study. OK, all right. Remember, eat a little bit of protein first. Yes, I heard that'll you keep you steady. Too. Your blood sugar will stay set uh, steady through the whole thing. <laughs> Miss Barbara, I do have to be honest. I'm still a little confused as to what I did wrong on question number 23. OK, let's go back and look at it. OK. Um, let me save this. Did I write it down? Yes, I did. Oh, no, not that one. Uh, 24, I meant. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, 24, you got right. Or 22, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's hard. By anybody's way of looking at it, that is difficult. So anyway, here's what I did. Now you feel free to ask me about it. Is it big enough for you to see? I can make it larger. OK, perfect. Let's see. X to the fourth minus 18x squared. OK, x to 2 times 6. OK, let's see. 32 minus 2 because negative 16 plus negative 2 is negative 18. Yes. OK, beautiful. 16. Nope, I get it. I do oh, get good. it. Yes, good. I do understand. OK, I'm second guessing myself. That's not too good. OK, cool beans, cool lagoons. I think I'm good. I think All I'm, right. feeling pre I'm feeling pretty confident. I will give you a call if I need a helpline for sure. OK, good. Yes, thank you, Miss Barbara. Thank you. OK, we have just done. Problems number. Um, I'm trying to make this smaller and having a little bit of trouble. There. Let's get. Um,
this that I marked out the ones that we did and now add problems to it and then do the others. Okay, so we I have to use theirs. Let's use yellow. All right, so we did 25. That's what I want. 20. It's an eraser. All right, all right. Every, every piece of software is different. We've done 25 now. We've done 22 and 23. with 22 being a real toughie. Okay, let's try this again. 22. Why is it doing it together as a group? Have we done this one? Yes, we have anyway. All right, no problem. We have done 21, 22, 23. We did 24 yesterday. And 25. We did 20 yesterday. Well, 21 rather. And 20. 20 was yesterday. We could still do 18 and 19. So let's do that. I don't need it that large. It's a little overkill. Um, all right, let's do number 18. Number 18 on the practice exam two. All right, and all we're going to do is square the binomial six plus seven I, the complex number rather. But it does consist of two parts, the real part and the imaginary part. OK, so we're going to handle this just like we would a binomial. OK, I'll take the six multiply by the 6, and the 6 multiply by 7i, and then the plus 7i and multiply by 6, and the plus 7i and multiply by 7i, otherwise known as FOIL, but this way we're just using a traditional distribution method. Okay, so 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times plus 7i is plus 42i. And 7i times 6 is also plus, that's plus 7i times 6 is plus 42i. And move this over a little bit. Um, uh, seven, plus 7i seven times plus 7i is plus 49i squared. Okay, so 36 plus 84i plus 49 times negative 1 because I squared is negative one. 
Well, that means we're going to have 36 minus 49 plus 84i. So we'll have negative 13 plus 84i. Now that's how you do it by hand. And notice that this says, hey, I'm right. Let's make it larger. There. However, let's also do it on the calculator because that makes your graphing calculators worth the expense. These smart view calculators are really handy dandy and right now you can get you can get it free for 90 days. I don't know how long that'll last. Probably because it's in development. I can already see changes they're making sometimes monthly, sometimes daily even. So always improving it and probably when they get to the end of their improvement, um, guess what? You're just going to have to pay for it. OK, so first make sure click on mode. And make sure that A plus B I is highlighted. It's not here, so I'm going to use my down arrow key to move down to where real is highlighted and blinking, and I'm going to use the right arrow key to move over to where the uh, cursor is blinking on top of A plus BI. And as soon as I hit enter, A plus BI becomes highlighted and you can tell because as you move back, the A plus BI now has a black background. We are now in complex mode. So, now, uh, what was this problem? This problem was 6 plus 7i quantity squared. So, parentheses, 6 plus 7i is here, right above, um, there, right above the decimal, decimal point key. So to access it, I push the second button and then decimal point, and that gives me 7i. I close my parentheses and then I square, and then I hit enter. And there's my answer, negative 13 plus 84i with no suffering. Although maybe a little suffering is better at the beginning so you can understand the mechanics of what is really going on. Okay, that was number 18. Now let's go to number 19. Hey Barbara, I'm so sorry. I came back because I needed help on number eight. That's great. So here's number eight. Now, what version of number eight do you have? I have a A to the number. All I'm, right, wait, wait. 20, uh, is, is it 20? Yeah, and then A to the 11th power. All right. And then B. And then it's times. OK, the square root. Of 8A. 8A. Uh-huh, to the 12th power. OK. B to the 10th power. OK, I want to do it what might be an easier way. Let's see, easier than what I did yesterday, because I think what I did yesterday was really hard. 
I didn't intend for it to be. So let since these are both square roots, let's let's just take the square root of this 20 a to the 11 b to the 1 times 8 a to the 12 b to the 10. Now all we have to do is multiply our like terms or I not really like terms, but multiply the constants together, multiply the A terms together. They're not terms. Multiply the A's together and multiply the B's together. So I'm going to rewrite this stuff so it's close together. This is going to be 20 times 8. A to the 11th times A to the 12th times b to the 1, times b to the 10. And that will be the square root of 160 a to the 11 plus 12 b to the 1 plus 10. So that will be 160 the square root rather of 160 a to the 23rd power b to the 11th power. Wow, that is that is great. That is a good hack. OK, awesome. Yeah, now wait, I'm not done, though. Oh, just kidding. It's that fake excitement, Miss Barbara. Uh, however, I think it is easier to do from here because you've just got less clutter to deal with. And the way I did it yesterday was just like a complicated nightmare. And I didn't like the way I did it anyway. All right, so. 16 times 10 is um, 160 is going to be 16 times 10. And then remember, I'm going to be dividing the powers by 2 because of the invisible 2 index that square roots have. So a to the 22 times a to the 1 and b to the 10 times b to the 1. I didn't really gain anything with the b's, but oh well. OK, now everything that's a perfect square there is this. The square root of 16, a to the 22nd, b to the 10 because two goes evenly into 22, two goes evenly into 10, and the square root of 16 is four. Now what's left is going to be 10, a to the one, b to the one. Now this is going to be the square root of 16 times a to the 22 divided by 2 times b to the 10 divided by 2 times the square root of 10ab, which will not break down. And we will have 4 a to the 11 b to the five. And this is so much better than yesterday. Beautiful, okay. That makes sense. Good. 
I want to write it again, you know, kind of away from the other work so it's really clear. There. I like that so much better than what I did yesterday. So much. But sometimes you've got to do it a really hard long way before you say, wait, stop, stop. <laughs> Let's go for an easier, more direct method. That's OK. So it was educational to me, too. So I'm glad I had to do it again. I was about to do number 18. You want to hang around while I do it or are you gone already? I'm here. Yeah, okay. I'll hang around. OK, because it's another one like the one that gave you trouble. Oh, good. OK. I mean, not 18, 19. All right, see we have x to the fourth minus 11 x squared plus 28 equals zero. So again, we're going to use u substitute, excuse me, u substitution. Let me make sure I wrote that correctly. Okay, so I'm going to let you equal x squared and then u squared equals x squared squared equals x to the fourth. So now I can write this as u squared minus 11u plus 28 equals zero. And now we can factor this. Um, and because there's a one in front of u squared, I can use the easier grouping method or the more simple grouping method anyway. Now I just have to factor 28 into two numbers that add up to negative 11. And I can do that because 28 equals 4 times 7 and negative 4 times negative 7. And four equal negative 11. So that is super cool. Um, I'm going to say minus 4, minus 7. And then I go through the usual thing of setting each factor equal to 0. U minus 4 equals 0. Plus 4, plus 4. Negative four plus four is zero. So I'll have u equals zero plus four is four. And then over here, u minus seven equals zero. Add seven to both sides so that I can get u by itself because seven plus seven equals zero, so u, u is on its own on the left, and on the right we have zero plus seven. 
So now I've got U equals four and U, U equals seven. And then this is where you feel like you're done, but you're not because U really equals X squared. And X squared equals seven. So U squared equals four and U squared equals seven. I take the square root of each side to find out what X is. And I remember the plus or minus square root of four took the square root of both sides and put a plus or minus in front of the radical in front. That includes the constant, the radical of the constant. Uh, so I'll have X equals plus or minus two. And over here, we're going to do the same thing. The square root of X squared equals plus or minus the square root of seven. And so X equals, here seven is not a perfect square, so it won't break down to a nice number like that. We're just going to have to stick with plus or minus the square root of seven. And so there are four zeros of this function, which is correct because This is highest power four, which means there have to be four zeros. So the zeros are plus or minus two. Well, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna write them in order. Negative two, two, negative the square root of seven, and the square root of seven. Brought to you by U substitution, which back in the very ancient times was mu substitution, not ancient, dark ages, middle ages. There you go. Was the Greek letter mu, but now, now it's just U.